look at the eTech Facebook Live Fridays. Today, I'm going to be puncturing batteries for the sake of science. There's three goals in this stream today. The first one is safety, and it's the highest concern. It's to make sure that you have all the tools and procedures to follow so you don't hurt yourself in the event something does get punctured. The second thing is to show you what actually happens when a battery is punctured and how to handle it. And then the last one is how to prevent that from happening. It is 100% something that you can avoid. You just have to be careful when using certain tools. The four batteries I'm going to be puncturing today, the four batteries I'm going to be puncturing today are an OEM battery at 100%, an aftermarket battery at uh, 100%, an OEM battery at less than 20% and an iPad battery at 100%. The reason for these four batteries is to show in each scenario what's going to happen. The less than 20% one is to basically test the claim from the manufacturer that a battery with less than 20% charge cannot cause a thermal event. So to get prepped, before I puncture the first one, I'm gonna put some safety things on. Safety glasses are a must to protect your eyes from anything that may fly. I have some fire gloves. These aren't required. I actually got these with a the fire pit, so they're not really phone repair related. But this is going to protect my hands because this does get very hot. The battery fire does not last long, but it is temperatures upwards of 1,000 degrees, so definitely want to protect yourself. So I put these gloves on. And then something that is very cost-effective that you should have in your shop is a battery or mediation kit like this right here. All this is is a white mouth cereal bucket with some clay sand in there. What happens with, or what you use this for, is the battery is going, you dump the sand onto the thermal event, the battery on the iPhone, iPad, whatever it may be. What that does is cut off the supply of oxygen because oxygen getting to the cell is what causes it to react and keep that thermal event going. Once you cut off that supply of oxygen, no more, no more thermal events. So I'm gonna take my first battery, and also I have a fire extinguisher here, just as an extra measure in the event something else happens, but should be good today. So I'm gonna grab my OEM battery at 100%. If we can move the camera in closer here. So the scenario here would be, say I'm doing a screen replacement and I'm disconnecting something or my hand slips. I'm using a blade today just to get the process going faster, but the tool you would have in your hand would either be a pair of tweezers or a screwdriver. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna stand back because who knows what's going to happen? It can happen, cannot happen, but worst case, we're gonna have a fire. So pretend I'm going. Right there, we just have smoke so far. It's getting really hot on the underside. It's like molten red. What's that temperature at? That's pretty hot. So the other thing here, just because this battery is done does not mean it's fully done. So do not put a battery like this in a box with other batteries or even your trash can or dumpster. Have this in a safe spot. If this ever happens to us, what we do is put it here out back, let it kind of cool down for about a day, just to make sure there's nothing else that's gonna happen with it. I would say about 24 hours is good for it to clear out any type of reaction it would have. So I'm gonna take this OEM, move it over to my holding plate, grab my next battery, which is my aftermarket at 100%. Do the same thing. So, so far, all we have is smoke and it's, oh, there we go. We've got the fire. So, battery radiation kit. I'm going to take it. There's fire. Now there's no fire. It's as easy as that. Now, the unfortunate part here, sand is kind of hard to get out of things. So, if you are working on a customer phone, the phone may be toast. You, there's a chance you can clean it out. But the number one goal is to prevent you hurting yourself or causing damage to other phones or the building customers that are there. So I'm gonna take this one, move it over to my folding plate. I'm gonna move my sand over. And one question we get is, can you, can you reuse the sand? Typically, if you can clean it out and there's not all the materials from the old battery, you can just put it back into your bucket. Um, but this, I believe a, a bag of sand from Home Depot or Lowe's, just hardware supply stores, it's like 10 bucks or five bucks. So you should have enough sand to keep reusing it. So this next one would not be as exciting. This is testing the claim that a battery under 20% cannot cause a thermal event. So this right here, I think the battery is at like one or 5%. I'm gonna take my blade, do the same thing as I did on the other ones, and we should get little to no reaction. 
obviously that little to no. I'm going to puncture it a couple more times. All right, so what that proves here is if you've had issues with puncturing batteries and causing thermal events, and you're kind of uneasy about doing battery replacement, just discharge the battery. Have a video playing in the background or just let the phone sit there for a while. That battery draining should prevent a thermal event from happening. So this one looks like it's safe, nothing happened with it. It doesn't even look like it's getting hot, so we are safe there. And then this is the finale. So this one is the biggest battery we're puncturing today. This is the worst case scenario battery that would happen and probably the easiest one for it to happen too because if you've done an iPad, you know cleaning the frame is an important part of the process and that involves a blade or a sharp tool around the edges. You slip and hit that battery, not good news. So I'm going to simulate that here. I'm cleaning my frame, I slip. Definitely a lot more smoke here. It's hot enough to ignite. What are we reading at? There we go. And you notice one cell puffed up and the other didn't. They are independent cells. So I'm going to try. There we go. There's the other cell going. And while this is going, I'll talk a little bit about fumes. The chemicals that are in this aren't liquid, but they are not the best to breathe in, especially when they react like this. So you have graphite. I believe you have an, another chemical in there. Don't remember the exact name of it, but the, there's two of them in there that react with each other. That's how you get the electrons that produce the power. When oxygen gets in there, as I mentioned, that's when they'll react because it's not part of the process that's supposed to be in there. But that's all it takes. A little bit of a nick and it'll go off. As a bonus, I actually have another battery that we prepped for this today. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that one and move these over. And in our testing of this process, these had the best result when being punctured, which again shows don't puncture batteries, but I'm gonna take this one. There we go, I'm gonna move the paper out of the way. And then we'll put it out with our battery remediation kit. Again, sand in a bucket is all it takes to be safe. Again, just recapping today's video. I know this was a more exciting one. It was fun for us to do too, but safety is the number one concern. The biggest thing is avoid this from happening. I showed you what happens if it does occur. And second is if it does happen, have your safety things. Have a battery remediation kit, wear safety glasses, and above all, protect yourself and other people. That's all I have for today's video. As an added bonus, we have a 10% off coupon code FLASH for today. Since we want to get you guys repairing more batteries, and now you know what can happen if things go wrong and how to be safe doing the